Hiya. Hello. Welcome to the Geeky Girls Knit and Cross Stitch podcast. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Dam, also known as Dammy's Doodles. And we're glad to have you today. Today is Friday, the 11th of October, 2019, and this is episode 365. It's like we've recorded a podcast every day for a full year. 365 days. <laughs> you could watch one of our episodes every day for a full year. Or you could not. <laughs> ah, yeah. Um, if you've been with us for any length of time, or if this is your first episode, it's okay too. We love you. Um, we'd like to say a big welcome back. We love you guys. To all our returning viewers and a big hi to any new viewers. Thanks for giving us a shot. Hope you enjoy the show. Dammy, we had a couple of new people introduce themselves in the Ravelry group this week. Why don't you give them a shout out? All right. Terry, who is spink. Oh, I thought it was spink. No. Spin knit pearl. And no. Then... Spin knitting pearl. Oh. Close enough. And then Tanya, who is Tigger RD. Tanya, not Tanya. She, she told us that in her, her introduction. I was confused because I thought it would be Tanya. Not Tonya. I've and never met a person named Tonya. Tonya Twister. Ravelry. Okay. They're in our group. I've never met a person that I have, like, talked to. <gasps> I've known... I've known Tanya's and Tonya's. It should be... It should be Tonya. That's what my choir director would say. Tonya. You're not... Tanya! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not making fun of your name. I'm, I am... Welcome. I've had too much coffee. And I'm hotter more. Um, because we have a lot to do today. Uh, she just got home from school, like, 30 minutes ago, maybe. Because her birthday's on Sunday. Donate to BCEFA if you're friends with me on Facebook. Yes, should I put a link to that in the show notes? Oh, there is a link to your Facebook in the show notes, I think, at the very bottom. You can put a link to that post, though. It should be public. Or if it's not, I'll make it public. Okay, remind me, and I'll put it in the, um, at the end of the episode, mm -hmm. where we have announcements. Remind me, and I'll put a link, that link there. Okay. Instead of getting me something, because I don't need more things, donate to BCEFA. But you're grateful when people give you things. Yes, but... <laughs> because, well, I'm saying that because you received a gift that we're going to show on yes, the podcast. But... <laughs> I donated and I have things to give you. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, Tammy, if somebody's not a member of our Ravelry group, what should they do and why? You should join and introduce yourself in our introductions thread because you'll get a shout out on the next episode and be able to participate in all our alongs and giveaways. Well, if you watched last week's episode, you saw that it was a mini one because... Things were crazy. It was my birthday. We were leaving for Vancouver the next morning. Um, so we have a little catch up to play today. Um, so this might be a smidge longer. We try to keep it around an hour ish usually, but this one might be a smidge longer because we have RAL people to announce that they completed and we have some prizes for them. Let's just talk on two times speed. Well, we should get started. Here we go. Now we're going to talk about what is on our needles. What's on your needles, Dammy? I haven't gotten anything done like Persephone wrap. I've been enhancing my craft in other ways. Tell us about it. We learned a dynamics warm-up in my theater voice class that I'm supposed to be doing every day until Monday, and every day after that probably, too. And it's like a combination of yoga and gentle stretches and stuff, and I'm going to do it later tonight. Maybe I can do it with you. It's a lot of being on your knees. And it's like 20 minutes long. Maybe I can do some of it with you. Okay. Okay. Um, that's for your theater voice class. Yes, to open up our instrument. Um, you're also taking a music voice class. Yes. And is that a group, that's a group class, right? Mm -hmm. So, what is the, Dammy just started her sophomore year of college at Seattle Pacific University, in case you're new. Um, she's studying theater. Um, so what, what is like that <laughs> class going to entail? 
Um, it's just a bunch of gentle group singing. The midterm is singing a song that you choose from the songs we sing in class. Okay. The final is singing a song that you choose. Okay. How many people are there with you? There are nine total. Okay. Okay. That's not bad. Um, and then what's your other classes? Choir. Yes. Acting too. What are you doing acting too? Right now we're studying Stanislavski and Co. Okay, so this is like a study of like, almost like theater history. Is that what it kind of is? No, this is, this is acting fundamentals too, but we're getting into Stanislavski's life and how he developed his system. That's what it's called. Okay. I didn't study theater, so this is all new to me. Um, is that all your classes? Play script analysis. Ooh, what are you analyzing? Um, we just did Trifles by Susan Glaspell. That's a short 15, 20 minute play. It's really good. It's from the 1920s if you've ever read it. And then we're going to be doing Oedipus Rex, which means I need to read all of Oedipus Rex over this weekend. Well, at least you have another fairy ride. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, is there anything else craft-wise you would like to talk to us about? No, I brought my cross stitch home to work on, so I'll talk about that later. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that in a floss tube. Okay, anything else? My craft is myself, and I'm being enhanced daily. Thank you. Yes. Yes, and I'm very, Your very, turn. I'm very, very proud of you. And, and <clears throat> even just watching <clears throat> how you've matured in your craft and in your, um, how you accept criticism like within your craft and how you deal with rejection and such like that um I, i've seen just what i've seen just in the last year you're you're learning and growing it's all candace vance baby that's her favorite professor love of my life okay your favorite turn professor. um we're here. I was like, where is my project? So first up, I am working on the Inner Peace Shawl, which is a uh, pattern by Hohi Locatelli. I'm on US 4's 3.5 mil needles, and I'm using Pandia's Jewel Snug in the Supernatural colorway, and Suburban Stitcher Sock in the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park colorway. I am in section 9. Oh, can you kind of pull that down there? So I'm on section nine, so it's starting to go back up the other way. Um, yeah, I didn't get a ton of work on this done, but I did um, I did work on it last night while the Dr. Hubs and I were watching TV um, for part of the time we watched TV. So I've got that, and then I'm working on birthday socks for my bestie Katie using my French Vanilla Cappuccino sock pattern. They're on US one and a half, two and a half mil needles, and the yarn is Suburban Stitcher Sock in the Bashful colorway, and Seven Sisters Arts Meridian in the Pink Pearl colorway. Both of those colorways are from... <laughs> I forgot that's what it was called, and I was like, wait. <laughs> Pink Pearl, P-E-A-R-L. Not Pink Pearl. Pink Pearl. She's got a new spot where she takes all her naps. She rotates. Um, both of these yarns are left over from our Tickled Pink book. So this is the Seven Sisters and this is the Suburban Stitcher. Yeah, you do they do. And I got to meet Diane of Suburban Stitcher and show her. Um, Are you going to want that to be your picture? I don't know. We'll see. I haven't looked through my pictures. <laughs> um, and then the other sock, this is the first sock. The other sock is going to be uh, reversed. So it'll have the Suburban Stitcher as the toe heel cuff and the uh, Seven Sisters as the main. Because I don't have enough of either of them to do to do a pair, full pair of socks. And then for my English paper piecing, I didn't get a ton of progress because somebody stole my thread. I gave it back. You did give it back and then I was out of town and so I'm almost done with this flower. I gave it back. I know. So I have two more hexagons to do to finish this flower. I'm going to steal some more of your thread because I realized I have something here I need to stitch up and bring back to school, but I didn't bring my own sewing kit. How much is it worth? This coffee. I bought you that coffee. And you drink it all. 
and the other one when I finish this flower the other one will be inverse so it'll have the pandas pandas and kitties as the outside and the hound's tooth and the owls as the inside and that is everything that I am working on other than cross stitch so I think we should move on to FOs because I have one Now we're going to talk about her finished project in Baylor Colors. Um, this is my 40th preemie hat for the year. Uh, it's from my free top-down preemie hat pattern that you can get on Ravelry. I used US6's 4 mil needles and I used Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted in the Peapod Grass and Semolina colorways. I was trying to use it. I've got, I think I have like full skein still of the Peapod and the Semolina colorway, but I was trying to use up you know, like the last little bits of the other balls. So I used those up and then I did use grass for the rest of it. So number 40 for the year, which means I have 12 more to go to finish out the year. Wow. I know. I know. Um, and that's everything that I finished. So we should move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Plus tube. Dammy, what have you been working on? I did one whole stitch on this just now. So good. This is the Everyday News Adventure pattern by Joann's. Yes. But you've almost got a full bike. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. I'm going like by what there's the most of and like what fills in. Like, yeah, see. yeah. Because like this color I have now is gonna go like in all. The Show them so they know what you're talking about. So the color she's working on now is gonna fill in like right there between the gray and the teal. Hmm. It's blue. Oh, well, it looks teal to me. No, it, it's blue, not gray. Oh. Um. Can we like tilt the camera for just a second and show up there the bow that I put on? Mm. So this is the Live Simply that um, Giazzi Julia finished embroidering for me and yesterday I put on a bow and a button and hung it on the wall. Hope you didn't get sick with that. Um, it's been sitting and I was, I have, so I have another cross stitch finish, but I can't show you because it's a birthday present for Dammy. So she'll have to Hello. show you next week. Um, but I was finishing that yesterday with, with a bow and beautiful things. And so I added the bow to that one too. Okay. I finished something else too. And so you'll, that's two finishes for me this week. Your thing, though, took me less than an hour to cross stitch. Does it count? It doesn't count towards magical stitches, <laughs> no. For this week, it had to be at least 100 stitches on one project. But I finished just like right before I picked up Dammy from the ferry. Uh, this is Little Cat's Halloween by Doreen Jones from Just Cross Stitch Halloween 2019 issue. And so I will finish this hopefully in the next week and show y'all the what it looks like. Um, once I finish it, um, I bought a pumpkin, a wooden pup pumpkin that I'm going to mount this on. So it had a ton of back stitching. You see like all the way, that orange all the way around and the black and the white for the eyes and the green for the vines. But how cute is that cat and that jack-o'-lantern? No. This, the back stitching totally brought that jack-o'-lantern jack to life. And I got to add whiskers for the kitty. So, that is finished. Um, so, I probably will... Hmm, maybe I'll go back and work a little bit on my Quaker Pumpkin by the Stitchery. But, I want to show you all two things that I have upcoming. Um, I went and bought the floss for this this week. I'll show you in a second. So this is Emily's House by Lindy Stitches. I showed it to y'all last week or the week before. It says, speak for those who cannot speak for themselves for the rights of all who are destitute. And this is all the floss for it. Damn me, look. 
Oh, that's a lot of floss. And uh, a few weeks ago at Stitching Group, Rebecca brought in some fabric that she wasn't going to use because she prefers to stitch on Ada and somebody had given her um, some other fabrics. So I am actually um, going to take the three fabrics with me to Stitching Group this week and uh, this next week and have them help me pick which fabric to use the floss on. And several of us in the group are doing Emily's House as a stitch along. So we will be using the hashtag PNW Pacific Northwest PNW Emily's House SAL stitch, stitch along. I'll put the link in the show notes, but if you have this and want to stitch along with us, you're more than welcome to. So that is upcoming. What if they're not in the PNW? It doesn't matter. They can post it on Instagram. That's where I'll be using the hashtag. And then the other thing that I'm going to work on is, let's see, let me show it this way. So this is a free pattern from um, Priscilla and Chelsea of the Real Housewives of Cross, Cross Stitch. This is their Chicken Joy pattern. It's hard to see. There. And I bought the floss for it. I have not decided what fabric to use. I'll have to look and see because I don't need a ton because this is about four by four inches um, finished. Um, and I'm going to stitch this for my friend Mel because she has chickens. So I think she will get a kick out of it. So I bought the floss for that too while I was at um, Joanne's. Um, okay, and then School of Magical Stitches and Literature. Last week, I only ended up getting three points because it was an insane week, and I just did not have hardly any cross-stitch time. Um, and then this week's challenge, it's for apparition, and I'm having to modify it a little bit because I don't have four whips. Um, what you're supposed to do is on four whips stitch a total of a thousand stitches and it has each of them have to have at least a hundred stitches so um, for um, for little cats Halloween I did 532 stitches to finish it um, and so um, I probably I'll probably go back to Quaker Pumpkin and try to do the rest of my stitches on that. Um, and hopefully they'll count it okay because I don't have four, four projects. But I'll have gotten still my thousand stitches, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that will all work okay. We shall see. All right. Well, that is everything for Floss Tube. Um, but we do have a little bit of Floss Tube stuff in Yummies, so you should stay tuned. And now it's time for our favorite part of the show, yummies. What are yummies, Dammy? Yummies are our current favorite things, things we like, things we want to talk to. She was like, mm. She's such a, she, you guys. Pinky is such She's a so silly, cute. She's such a silly kitty. Okay, well the Dr. Hubs and I went to Vancouver um, over the weekend. And it's our tradition, as you can see, like by the wall behind us, we picked up postcards because that's what we do when we go someplace. So we got this Greetings from Canada postcard that has all kinds of lovely things on it. And then we got um, an I Heart Vancouver postcard. Um, okay, and then let me talk about Knit City. So there were so many amazing booths and so many lovely people. Um, probably the highlight for me was getting to meet Diane of Suburban Stitcher because I have worked with her so many times and we've never met in person. So she was lovely. I got to chat with her for a little while and um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, also met up with a podcast viewer. Uh, I got to meet the other half of Tin Can Knits. So we know Emily um, because she lives in Edinburgh. So we know her from our time living in Scotland. But we had, I had never met, we, neither one of us had ever met Alexa. 
Um, so I met Alexa at Knit City and told her who I was and she was very kind and I actually was able to ask her a couple of questions um, about Strange Brew, which is what I'm knitting for Nanny Swimmo in November. Um, so she was a lot of help uh, for me with that. Um, yeah, yeah, so it was a lot of fun. I didn't buy a ton of stuff, but um, let me just show you what I did get. So this is called the Original Shawl and Cowl Cuff Light. It's handmade by Knox Mountain Knit Co. And it's this leather strap with a snap. I don't have a shawl in here. When you put a shawl on, you can put this around it to help keep the shawl on. So it doesn't slip off. Um, oh, and they have a knit style highlight on their Instagram feed for ideas on how to adorn your knits with your leather cuff. So I should I should look at that. Um, I got one of the Knit City pens. Very pretty. It'll go up on my bulletin board above my desk. Um, I was gifted this yarn uh, to design with. So this is Ancient Arts Yarn. This is their Sock NATO base, which is an 80% superwash, fine merino, and a 20% nylon. It's fingering sock weight, 100 grams, 385 yards, 350 meters. So it's like a, a heavy fingering. And this colorway is, I wanna be in your stash. It's got reds and yellows and oranges and purples and then the cream. Um, so I am going to try to design a pair of manly socks out of these. This. I mean, I think... All socks are manly. Yeah, I mean, any of my designs that I've done. But, um, it, it, it would be nice to, to do design something with this. So I'm looking forward to doing that. And then this final thing I purchased, you guys... I actually FaceTimed Dammy and showed her everything in the booth so she could help me decide what to get. I had been wanting one of these for quite a while and uh, by buying it up there, I didn't have to pay shipping and the Canadian dollar unfortunately is not doing very well, but it was beneficial for us because one US dollar was one dollar and 33 cents Canadian dollar so it made it a little cheaper are you guys ready for this I got a Mrs. Brown's bag so this is the sock bag I would like to use that for my makeup it's cute it's kind of got a linen inside oh let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. sorry I'm trying not to look simple uh, it's denim exterior and a muslin, natural muslin interior. interior. Muslin. So I said muslin. You said muslin. No, muslin. Interior. And it, like that. And I bought the kit. Well, the, the whatever. This is the yarn that was used for this bag. So this is yarn ink art on a string. Uh, classic sock base in the Malibu colorway. Mm. So it's that pink and teal and yellow. It looks like there's a little bit of green and purple blue in it. So I'm very excited for this bag. I have wanted one of these for ages. And I'm so excited to get it. So that was my Knit City uh, haul. Um, there was lots of other lovely things, uh, but that's what came home with me. Um, so I'm excited to get to use it. Uh, Dammy, let's move on from Knit City. You bought you and I something. Oh, yeah. You want to show yours first? I only brought one of them home. The other one's at school. Needle minder. It's aerial. Aww. Um. My other one is mad. From Little, from Little Mermaid. Was that my phone or your phone that buzzed? My notifications are off. Mine's turned off too. That's weird. Okay. I got a Winnie the Pooh. Piglet and Pooh in an ice cream cone. Those are his tombstones. And 
Bell. And these are from So So Happy Mail Bristol on Etsy. Um, will put you put that? Yeah, put it in the put it in the show notes, and I'll put a link in the show notes for it. Um, so these are fun. Um, and then I don't know what she's on Ravelry on Kathy R. Kathy R. Um, I think I think her Instagram name is like Kathy R on Ravelry or something. She brought Dammy and I um, birthday gifts to knitting group on Wednesday night, and uh, Dammy wasn't there, but I brought hers home. Look at these cute stitch markers. Little markers keeper. Uh, I got a cat's paw print too. Scarf. And then she made these adorable gift tags. Yes, I made it. And no, no you, you can't, can't return, return it. it. And it's got care instruction on the back. This super, super cute. I'm excited to use these too. Luke's enamel pen. Yes. She had given me one uh, at some point in the past and then gave Dammy one as well. So, Kat, thank you so much, Kathy, for that. Um, okay. And then we got our October Knit Crate box. <laughs> so, this month we got... Vitalana. This is Vitalana Ascendance. It's 100% fine Peruvian Highland wool, sport weight, 100 grams, 328 yards, in the colorway Ancient Ruin. Ooh. It's very, very pretty. And it's very soft. It's kind of almost got... It's like a chain construction. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Very, very pretty. And then we did get, we got a stitch marker from Bling Your String. Uh, ceramic beads hand painted in Peru and it's got a locking clasp that was my phone I felt it so look at that beautiful bead and then let's look at um, the catalog or not the catalog the uh, the pattern the clip for this month so Patterns. Okay, so first up we have the Bundling Blanket and Bonnet Set. It's a crochet pattern by Amy Hansen. So if you crochet and are needing a, um, a baby item, it's done on USJ 10 6 millimeter crochet hook. Skill level is intermediate. And does it say the sizing for the bonnet? I am not seeing. Oh, here we go. Um, zero to six month and six to 12 month. So it comes in two sizes. Then we have um, a knit pattern. This is, how would you say that? Escalada. By Renata Cam. Very, very pretty. That texture is so nice. Um, this is knit on US 7s, 4.5 mil needles, um, with two skeins of the yarn. And it is a intermediate pattern as well. It's a triangular shawl. We also have the Inca Trail Socks by Laura Fallon. These are knit. And they are done on US 1s, 2.25 mil needles, intermediate skill level, four sizes, small to extra large. Um, and they're cuffed down. And then we have the Stonemason Socks by Karen Woolley. I know her. These are for the crochet socks. I know Karen. She actually lives up here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, and these are done on USC2 three millimeter hook, intermediate skill level, and it comes in four sizes. And the next month's theme is Beneath the Waves. 
As always, thank you to Nick Crate for sending us this box. We have a coupon code that you can use. Uh, the link is in the show notes. You can use the coupon code, all capital letters, GEEKY20, G-E-E-K-Y-2-0, to get 20% off your first order. This code will only work to discount the first month of a recurring monthly subscription um, and any of their shop items. So, you should definitely check that out. Do we have any other yummies besides our normal stuff? I don't think so. Okay, well then let's talk about hashtag GGK Crafty Pad. What is it, Dammy? It stands for Geeky Girls Knit Crafty Photo A Day Challenge. We have a list of photo prompts for each month. So you take a look at the prompt for that day, take a picture related to it, and post it anywhere you like. But we pick our favorites from Instagram. I'm looking to see what today's prompt is. Recent person purchase. I will take a picture of my Knit City stuff. So um, October's theme, it, part of it surrounds celebration for our birthdays um as well as um getting into autumn and halloween and all that stuff as well as some of our normal stuff so dammy what are we about to show them two photos from us that we liked and five photos from other people that we liked here come the photos Those are our favorite photos. Great job, everybody. It's never too late to join in. You just take a look at the prompts list. For example, today, Friday the 11th, when we're recording this, the prompt is recent purchase. You uh, interpret that however you want. We're very cheater friendly on this. You post your picture on Instagram. Make sure in the caption you use hashtag GGK Crafty Pad because that's how we find your photos. If you have a private account on Instagram and you're participating in GGK Crafty Pad, you need to make sure that Dammy, Dammy's Doodles, is following you or we can't see your photos. That's next door. I thought somebody was knocking on our door, but it's not. Um, and then yours might get chosen. So, um, upcoming events. The next one that I'm going to be attending is... Emma. Oh, dear. We have a tiny dog. Um, is Fiber Fusion Northwest, which is at Evergreen State Fairgrounds in Monroe, Washington, the third weekend in October. Uh, I will be going on Saturday for that. And then I will be attending Sea Meowcon, which is the Seattle Cat Convention, the last weekend in October. Oh, I need to remember to call um, and make, pay my knitting retreat cost. Uh, I'm going to a knitting retreat that is completely full. There's a waiting list for it. Um, that is being done, hosted by Alan Knit Shop on Saturday the 9th of November. And then I'll be going to Yarn Revolution, which is over um, in Seattle area, on Sunday the 10th of November. Lots of stuff, y'all. Lots of stuff. Take a break. I know. Seriously. Seriously. I'm glad we're home this weekend. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and... Thankfully, everything else is fairly local versus driving um, Canada. to Canada. So, all right. Well, I think that's everything for Yummy. So we should move on to the next segment. talk about what we are reading watching and listening to so what are you reading dammy uh, i'm kind of reading the secret Di diaries of miss ann lister i am not gonna put these in the show notes if you want i'm reading an introduction to stanislavski i'm reading a really technical book about the actor's voice um i read trifles reread trifles by susan glassball and i'm reading oedipus rex and one other thing it's in the show notes. 
and the Glass Scientist, which is a book comic by Sabrina Kachinko. It keeps, it updates every Monday, and I keep forgetting, and Hallie's like, have you looked at the update? I'm like, huh? Oh, it's Tuesday! <laughs> Hallie's her friend that, that she texts with. Um, okay, well, I assume with all of the things that you just named that you were getting your 15 minutes a day in. Yes, I'm also reading everyone's minds. What's that one for? Oh. Okay, I don't know about this book. <laughs> Everyone's minds. Oh, uh, wait, huh? I'm also reading Everyone's Minds. Oh, I thought you were talking about a book. I was like, what? I don't know about this book. <sighs> okay. So, uh, what are we... What, you're getting your 15 minutes a day in, yes. What am I referring to? The, our quarterly read-alongs, the July, August, September one is over. Now we are in October, November, December, last month of the year. Yes, but we didn't talk about this last week so, because we did a mini episode. So then uh. this week we need to tell you about who finished in the July, August, September read-along. So first up, we're going to talk about the people that read between 88 and 92 out of the 92 days. Yes. And they all have already received a coupon code for 20% off any of our single patterns or $1.20 to spend in our Ravelry shop, as well as a virtual badge. And what we're going to do now is tell you everyone who finished in that category, and then we'll announce who are the winners of uh, their choice of any of our eBooks. So, Dammy, would you like to tell us mm -hmm. who finished? Uh, Thank you for stalling. <laughs> who uh, who read eighty eight to ninety two of the ninety two days? I love days. to. So, we have A A Lauzon, A Bingham, Angie's Hip, I Now Hour, Fry Meister, Fuzzy Kit, Harps fifty seven, Joe Dadaya, Knitter Chow, Mose Crochet, Penny Gale, Psycho Hulakian, Restraus. Reby Writer, RMB Knitter, Share 2014, and Silver Luna 2112. Great job, y'all. I'm clapping in spirit. Okay, and then we used Random Number Generator and drew for six winners. Um, so if you are one of the winners, you'll have 30 days to claim your prize or you forfeit it. If you're one of the winners, you need to uh, PM me Java Pearl on Ravelry and tell me which of our ebooks you would like, and I will gift it to you. So, Dammy, who are the six winners? In alphabetical order. Yes. A. Bingham, Fuzzy Kit, Joe Dadaya, Penny Gale, Restraus. Did I skip over one? Oh, maybe there's only five. There's only five. Sorry. Oh my gosh. Scared me. Okay. There's... I'll say those one more time. We have A. Bingham, Fuzzy Kit, Joe Dadaya, Penny Gale, and Restraus. Yes. Okay. So, congratulations. PM me, let me know what you would like. Um, and then our second category, Dami, is those that read 61 to 87 of the 92 days. They've already received their virtual badge, and we will do their giveaway momentarily. But who finished in that category? Crafty Textile Lady and Ed Harley. Great job. And then we drew for one winner of uh, any, their choice of our, any of our single patterns. Who is the winner? Crafty Textile Lady. Congrats, PMB Java Pearl. Let me know which pattern you'd like and I'll gift it to you. And yay, congrats everyone. Now uh, what else? Okay, so the October, November, December read along continues the same way. You uh, read for at least 15 minutes every day. I don't care what you read as long as you're reading. Audiobooks do count. Dammy. You're not. I am. How? I don't know. You can talk about that in a second. Talk I will. They're going to be like, what? The suspense will kill you. Um, so there is a finish line thread in our Ravelry group. You post there once, and then you go back in and edit that thread. Minimum, you need to tell us that, you're, that you read 15 minutes that day. Some people put exact number of minutes. Some people tell us what they're reading. None of that's required, but you feel free to do that if you would like to. Give me a place to read. Tell me your favorite place to read. Yes. Um, so, but along with the seasonal rows, we are doing a year-long challenge, and you earn entries by participating, 
participating in the seasonal rouse. So, Dammy, out of July, August, September, we need to tell them, and I'm, I'm not going to put these on the screen, we're just going to read them out. Um, you can go to our Ravelry group and see them, I posted them there. Um, so, the people who read all 92 days get 10 entries into the year-long challenge. So, who did that, Dammy? A.A. Lauzon, A. Bingham, I Now Hour, Frymeister, Fuzzy Kit, Harps 57, Moe's Crochet, Penny Gale, Psycho Hulakian, Russ Strauss, R&B Knitter, and Silver Luna 2112. Great job, y'all. Those who finished 88 to 91 of the days got eight entries into the challenge. Angie's Hip, Joe Dadaya, Knitter Chow, Revy Writer, and Share 2014. And those that read 61 to 87 days got five entries. Those are Crafty Textile Lady and Ed Harley. So, we will do the same for the October, November, December read-along. Um, and then there's bonus entries you can get. If you read all 365 days this year, you get another 10 entries. And if you complete the Modern Mrs. Darcy 2019 reading challenge, there's a link to that in the show notes and in the Ravelry group, you'll earn six bonus entries. Um, what I think I'm going to do, Dammy, is like beginning of December, I'll do a separate thread for the Modern Miss Darcy Challenge, and y'all can go in and post your stuff there, and then I will use that to pull um, out and award the entries. And then the beginning of January 2020, which is getting very close, y'all, uh, two and a half months to go, uh, we will draw for three grand prize winners out of all of those entries, and they will be getting yarn, a pattern and other stuff we've already started accumulating stuff and we will award that to three of y'all so, yes okay now let me talk about what i've been reading i finished a bunch of stuff this week yes. this last two weeks y'all because we That's didn't record it's so much it's right so i finished reading uh white fragility why it's so hard to talk to white people about racism by robin d'angelo that was very very good sorry my mouth is getting dry so you're going to drink coffee. Because of all the talking. Um, I also finished reading Godland, a story of faith, loss, and renewal in Middle, middle America by Liz Lenz. Uh, it was a very, very interesting read. Um, yeah. I also finished and highly, highly, highly five-star recommend Miracles and Other Reasonable Things a Story of an Unlearning and Relearning God by Sarah Bessie. This only came out like Tuesday, and I've already read the whole book wow. because it was so good. So Sarah, I have followed Sarah's writing for years, years and years and years. Um, and I've read all her other books that she's had, and uh, just she's just a really amazing writer. Uh, in this most recent book, Part of what she's talking through is her journey of she was in a horrific car accident and uh, messed up her spine, uh, broke her foot, and it wasn't caught until months later that she'd actually broken her foot. That's no fun. Um, and lots of other injuries. Um, and as stuff healed, she still was continuing to have really horrible pain and fatigue and everything. And if that sounds familiar, it's because she was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, which is what I have and I've talked to you all about before. I suppose it was exacerbated by the car accident. Uh, it was triggered by the car accident. It, a, a lot of times uh, fibromyalgia will um, set in Lay dormant. Because, when you have a traumatic event happen. Yeah. So um, it makes your nerves go crazy. Um, so it was just, it was an amazing book and I just devoured it and loved it and highly recommend it. Delicious. Um, I, I am reading. You don't need to put air quotes around it. Because I'm listening to the audio book, y'all. <laughs> what? I am listening to Orange is the New Black by Piper Kerman. Uh, I didn't realize it was a, a nonfiction book. It's a memoir. I've never watched the show. I might after reading this. Um, so I know. I have told y'all for years that I can't listen to audiobooks. Tell them why. 
I used to proof audiobooks and so um it's very it was very hard to like listen to them and like hear mistakes that weren't caught and such but um I started well, now you're listening in non-professional grade headphones so that that's probably true helps. or through the car system or on my phone um so I actually downloaded one I didn't put it in here. The oh, one that st I started with was... Maybe uh, you were like, I don't want to get their hopes up. Um, <laughs> hold on, I can't think of what the name is. It's a... Uh, James Patterson. Hi, Bangy. And, oops, it would be helpful if I spelled Patterson right. And um, Bill Clinton... It's about the president. The president is missing. Um, yeah, so I actually downloaded it and started listening to it while I was walking. Um, because I had like, uh, there was not a podcast that I was just like ready to listen to at that point. I was like, mm. so I downloaded it and listened to it. And then finished listening to it and started listening to Orange is the New Black. So... I am almost done, though, with Orange is the New Black. I think I have, like, two hours left of it. Yeah. Two hours left of that. Um, so, yes. Um, and then Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, fourth book in the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. Rereading that with Harry Potter and the Sacred Text podcast and Swish and Flick and All Potter podcast. Uh, one of the weeks, uh, we did the chapter of Priori in Can't... In Priori incantatum. Yes, that one. Um, where Harry is being is dealing with coming back to Hogwarts. Post traumatic stress. Yes, after uh, Cedric has died and Voldemort and all of that. Uh, and then the second week, there was a special Swish and Flick episode. But they had a guest on... And he's the host of another Harry Potter podcast, and I cannot think what the name of it is. Anyway, so we didn't do another chapter for that one. You guys, I finished, finally, rereading The Fiery Cross, book Good. five in the Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon. And I'll be designing a pair of socks uh, inspired by that book, Out of Yarn, from Julia of Pendia's Jewels. So watch for that upcoming. You better. Um, okay, the In-Depth series by J.B. Robb. I finished reading books 22 to 26. That's five books. Yes, it is. Part of the reason was because I had an ebook that had books 21 to 25 in it, and I only had it for a short amount of time because there was a waiting list, and so I just had to, like, power through. So, and of course, it's been two weeks. And then I'm reading Everything, Everything You Are by Carrie Ann King. I'm, I'm just barely into it, so I don't have a lot to say on that. Okay, television and movies. Oh, let me talk about all these. Hold on. The fall season is back, y'all. Okay. Oh, you watched this movie with us. What? Joking, rolkin' Tolkien. We... I thought it was going to be about his Oxford time, not young adult time. Yes. So I was a little, I caught off guard. So we watched uh, the movie Tolkien, and... Um, Tolkien, Rolkin, Tolkien. It was, it was, it was pretty good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it does talk about his young adult years. Um, okay, and then I watched three Hallmark movies. I watched Ruby Herring Mysteries, Her Last Breath. I watched Over the Moon in Love. And I watched Matchmaker Mysteries, A Killer Engagement. Okay. And then, the, uh, oh, well, you watched some, too, because you were here with us. Uh, we watched, we've been watching Father Brown. We finished season four, and we're watching series five. How long did it go on for? It's still going. It's still in the air. Uh, let's see. Let's look it up on my best friend, IMDb. Father Brown. Episode guide. Nine series. Uh, seri series nine. Oh, no. So they finished series seven, and it's been um, renewed for series eight and series nine. Apparently, okay, valid. So, yeah. 
Um, and then I'm watching series nine of Doc Martin. Doc might lose his job. Rip. Yep. But then he has, because I watched multiple episodes, y'all. Uh, he had to have training to remain as a GP, and Louisa is worried about James' social skills, and they're trying to have another baby. Okay. Yes. Um, I watched um, two or three episodes of Stumptown, uh, season one. It's got some interesting potential. Um, was it you who said to me that it's kind of like uh, modern day, like Rockford, Rockford Files? Or was that Daddy who said that to me? I have no idea what Rockford Files is. Okay. It is kind of a modern day Rockford Files. Do I look old? Uh, it's got Colby Smolders in it from... How I Met Your Mother. That's right. <laughs> and she's playing a, um, a private investigator. I, in Portland, Oregon. Yes, even though it's not filmed there. Um, I really, really, really appreciate and respect the way that they have introduced a character who has Down syndrome and are treating him as just a normal person. Um, and that, you know, they're not making it... Where this he, is our token disabled character. Exactly. Uh, and that's especially close to my heart because my uncle, who has since passed away, um, had Down syndrome. And so that is something that is very close to my heart. And so when I saw they were going to have a character with Down syndrome, I was worried that it was going to be the token disabled character. But it has not been. And I really appreciate that. Um, I'm watching season one of When Hope Calls. I watched the season four finale of Chesapeake Shores. Of course, they always end on a cliffhanger because that's just the way they do it. Um, we're watching season 13 of Murdoch Mysteries. Watching season 11 of NCIS LA. Harm and Mac, and they were together, and they were discussing things. And then we didn't get, like, an ending. They kind of left it up in the air. Um. Just like they did when they ended Jag. <sighs> I hope they come back on this season and, like, they give us closure. I need some closure. I need to know that they are together. Um, I'm watching season five of Supergirl. Catco was bought out and James is no longer in charge. Well, rest in peace. Yeah. Um, watching season one of Prodigal Son. Really enjoying that. It's a very good show. Season 17 of NCIS. Ziva! Ziva just kind of disappeared again off into... Her own thing, and there was no closure there as well. Sadly. Uh, season 6 of NCIS New Orleans. Season 7 of The Blacklist. And season 15, the final season of Supernatural. I watched that before I came and got you on the ferry. Hell was broken open at the end of season 14 well, by, well. by God. And God then took a hike, and all of the everything is coming out of hell. Yeah, so like all of these, um, critters, creatures, <laughs> creatures, ghosts, demons, etc. Ghosts they, and demons are creatures that they have uh, fought and beat in the last fourteen seasons are all suddenly back. And what are they gonna do? Um, so, and then listening to, of course, my favorite murder podcast, the Hades Town OBCR. I told y'all I'm listening to some audio, to audiobooks again. Uh, Dammy, what have you been listening to? Um, did a bit of cabin pressure, a little bit of My Fair Lady, but now I'm on a roundabout theater and company kick. So I listened to the 2016 revival of She Loves Me. Yeah, which yeah, had yeah. Zachary Levi, Laura Benanti. Gavin Creel, Nicholas Barash, Jane Krasowski. I know some of those names. I don't know all of those names. You need to I'll put that put in the show notes. All right, I'm y'll... using a song from it for my audition song, but I'm just having trouble deciding which one. So okay. I was like, let's listen to the whole thing on repeat. So you listen to it on the ferry? Yes. yes. All right, guys, this segment is 20 minutes long. We probably should move on to the next one. And now 
we're going to talk about our September, October, November Artistic Autumnal Owl. Tell us all about it, Dammy. So this started on the 1st of September and it runs through the 30th of November. And this is for any project that you can knit, crochet, weave, spin, stitch, or sew that you can convince us is related to autumn. If you can't think of anything, you made it in the autumn. Um, the stitch and sew are new things that we're allowing in, like cross stitch, sewing. Punch needle embroidery but and other things like that but if you're like i don't know if this counts or not you can post in our chatter thread or send one of us a message yes. and we'll say let's think about it yes. so there are a couple main rules the first is that no whips are allowed your project ha must have been begun no earlier than the first of september and finished no later than the 30th of november the other main rule is that each project that you knit crochet weave or spin must be at least 20 yards um, but if your project is not at least 20 yards, you need to group it in a single post with multiple projects that together total at least 20 yards. For stitching and sewing projects, we're leaving it to your best judgment, but if you want our opinion, you can ask us. Yes. The same way. Post yes. in the thread, send us a message. That's right. We've got, uh, you can feel free to poly dip in other alongs that are happening right now, that's totally fine. We have lots of lovely prizes that are on our screen right now. Thank you so much to our donors. If you are interested in donating a prize, you can PM Java Pearl on Ravelry or email us at geekygirlsknit at gmail.com. If you'd like a closer look at our prizes or where they came from, you can go to our show notes, geekygirlsknit.com. You must be a member of the Geeky Girls Knit podcast group on Ravelry in order to participate. There's a hashtag if you'd like to tag your projects or post on social media. It is GGK Autumn 19. The FO thread is going to be locked on the morning of the 1st of December, and winners will be drawn for the next podcast after that. And any winners will have 30 days to claim their prize or they forfeit it. There's a chatter thread in the Ravelry group where you guys can ask her opinion, say, is this allowed? Is this big enough? Or you can post your progress, congratulate each other. And it's where I congratulate people who finish projects. So now I'm going to congratulate people who finish projects In for the, the last, last two weeks. weeks. Yes. <laughs> so All right. we have A. Bingham, Ashless Phoenix, Bead Weasel, Crafty Textile Lady, D. Dorf 4, DJ ID, I Now Hour, Falling Star 12, Philippa MC, Jen Park 248, Joe Dadaya, Knit Central, Knit Live Love, Knitter Chow, K Wilson 670, Little Angel SG2, El McCall, Little Mermaid, Mama Mia 64, Mockingbird Maid, Mystery Sewer, Nicole S, Phoenix Fire, Psycho Hulakian, Riss Strauss, Smash Williams 94, Cher 2014, Shirley Knits 123, Silver Luna 2112, Travel Socks, VT Kimmy Kim, Yarn Taxi Driver, and Yell Cat 2. Yay, great job everybody. Keep working on those projects. You have a little over a month and a half to get them finished. I forgot to add in, I have another prize. Um, I ended up with two copies of the, I think it's the October issue of Just Cross Stitch. So I'm going to add one of them as a prize for the, um, for the along and, um, We'll just make sure that whoever we draw for the winner of, of that actually cross stitches or is interested. So, um, yeah. So I think we're ready to move on to our next segment. And now it's time for Ask the Geeky Girls. The part of our show where you ask us things and we try to answer them. Yes, so what's this week's question? This week's question comes from Caitlin, who is the knitting oboe from... Delaware. Cece, what advice do you have for someone who wants to start English paper piecing? Supplies, fabrics, etc. All right. So I actually took a class at a local, local fabric store uh, for English paper piecing. In fact, I believe it was a year ago today that I did it. <laughs> a year ago this weekend that I did it, um, that I took the class. Um, so if you have a, a fabric store local to you, you might check and see if they have a class because it's always fun to learn together. Mm -hmm. um, so, but here is some things that I can recommend to you. First up is the book that they had us uh, purchase for the class, which is called All Points Patchwork, English Paper Piecing Beyond the Hexagon for Quilts and Small Projects by Diane Gilliland. Gilliland? Gilliland? Gilliland. 
there's what it looks like. There is a, a Kindle version if you don't want to buy a physical book. Um, and so that's what I did. I have that on my phone. Um, and it's got good information about getting started and then different projects and different ways you can do things. What else do I recommend? I've got my bag over here open. I'm going to show you. A pair of very sharp scissors to cut your fabric or and or um, a rotary cutter. I have not purchased one of those yet. I should. A rotary, rotary cutter and cutting board. You can get by with scissors. It's probably easier if you have a rotary cutter. Fabric. I am primarily using uh, fat quarters, which you can purchase at any uh, craft store. fabric store. Um, and if you watch, sometimes they have deals on them. Like I know, deals. I'm pretty sure that Joann's does a deal on them like the day before Thanksgiving. Mm. So just watch your local craft stores and see if they have a deal. So fabric. And what I did is I cut a, um, well, let me show you. So I am using the pre-cut uh, paper pieces. These are from Amazon. They're from Amazon. I can't remember the brand, but they're like hexagonal. I, they're two inch hexagons, even though they're larger than two inches. I don't know. There's a, the way they measure them. They count this as two inches. You yep, have that's the side. So. Um, these and then what I did for my fabric is I cut a square that's the same size. Does that you know what I'm talking about, Dammy? Yes. I mean you want it to be a little bigger because your fabric's gonna have to fold over. So I did a square that is just a little bit bigger than this, and I have that as a template for when I cut my fabric. Yes, because your fabric does need to fold over the edges. Um, what else? A pin cushion for your pins and your needles. Why are you putting it to your head? Because I'm mine has, putting myself in it. Mine has a wrist strap, so you can wear it. I don't ever do that. So. <laughs> um, you're going to need thread. So for actually stitching them together, they recommend this uh, Coates Dual Duty XP for uh, paper piecing. Yeah, that's the one I stole. The, it is lavender. It's a lavender color spools. I'm using just a, a pale gray for mine. And then you'll want like extra thread for basting your stitches. Um, so I thought you only did that to turkeys. So if you look here on the back of mine, <laughs> you can see I'm using this peach color thread to like baste the corners down. So you fold it around and baste it. And then when I'm actually sewing the pieces together, I'm using that, that gray, that light gray. What else sews in my little bag here? You will need pens, straight pens. I used, when I started, like the really uh, tiny ones, and they kept slipping out. And so I bought these. You lost your mind. I did. I use, these are the long pearlized pins, size 24, one and a half inches. And of course I got the ones with the pink balls on the end. Um, they also, when I took the class, suggested getting this and I found that it is helpful. It's this product called Thread Magic. And what you do is you put your thread in, put the lid on and pull it through and it helps it not get into knots as easily. I think that's everything. That I would recommend. Cool. Um, yeah, but like I said, if you do have a local craft store, um, you might check with them about classes um, because that can make it just a little more fun to do it together. That's what I did. I went with a friend to the class. Um, yeah, and that is what I would suggest. I will put, help me remember to put a link to that book in the show notes, Tammy. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for your question, Caitlin. I hope that that helps you out. Dammy, we, we, have a, we have a potential catastrophe awaiting us. Do you know why? We need more questions. We're all the geeky girls in it. Ask the geeky girls questions. Mm. So Dammy, if they have a question for us, what should they do? Go to our Ask the Geeky Girls thread in our Ravelry group and post it. 
you can ask us about anything. We've never said no to answering a question. So whether it's related to craft or not, our lives, fibromyalgia, what we read, whatever, we'll answer anything. Um, if we don't end up with a question for next week, what we will do is go into the archives and pull an old question and re-answer it and mm -hmm. see if things have changed since we answered it the first time. So, all right, Dammy, let's move on to the next segment. You guys, we made it to the end of a very long show. Okay, Dammy, do your announcement first. About what we were just talking about. Oh, um, for my birthday. My birthday. Like I said before, instead of asking for things for my birthday or anything, I'm asking for donations to Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS because it's an organization that I really like and I am appreciative to people who give me gifts, but I don't need a whole bunch more things because... I don't think any of us need, really need a whole bunch more things and so I think just cutting down is nice and that the money that would go on something like that might be better suited to go to BCEFA so there's going to be a link in the show notes if you would like to donate yes okay um, as we have mentioned in, uh, in the last few weeks we are moving our recording schedule to recording on Fridays because of Dammy's school schedule uh, I will be recording with her in person Starting next week, I will be we will be recording at your dorm mm -hmm. in the whatever the room is called. The movie lounge. We're gonna be in the movie lounge, y'all. Uh, hopefully, the lighting is good in there. We'll see how it goes. It um, and so, the thing is, I edit the podcast on our home computer, our Mac Mini, because it has more processing power than the laptop. So, when I record with Dammy, I won't be getting home until the evening, because I will wait and come home, excuse me, with the Dr. Hubs when he gets off work, because he's commuting over to Seattle now for work, which means, most likely, I am not going to have the podcast ready first thing Saturday morning. And that's okay. And that's okay. So, it will be coming out on Saturdays, but it most likely will be... Late Saturday morning, early Saturday afternoon. Potentially even late Saturday afternoon, just depending. Um, I know I've got lots of things upcoming, so I'm going to do my best to make sure and get it out before I go to those events. But sometimes life happens. So uh, I hope you will understand and bear with us. Um, I just, it's better for me to edit at home. And so I'm going to have to wait till I get home and edit and then it's a pretty long process to um, to go through things. So we record the podcast. It takes us usually about an hour and a half to two hours to record because we will record each segment individually. And then we have to upload all of that to the computer for editing. I have to edit the whole podcast. It has to generate the movie file. It then goes through another processor to help cut down the size of it so that it's not so difficult for you to download if you're on like if you're downloading via iTunes or your podcast app um and then once that's done it has to upload to both our uh iTunes host as well as to YouTube and then I have to have all that information to be able to put into the show notes so I have to do the whole show notes blog post I have to get the Ravelry threads ready I have to get social media posts ready um, so it's a long process and I most likely, especially since I will be getting up very early on Friday mornings to commute over with the Dr. Hubs, I am most likely not going to want to stay up late Friday night finishing it. Yeah. So that was a long explanation to tell y'all probably expect the podcast sometime lunchtime or potentially later on Saturdays. It will be still on Saturdays. If something happens and it's not going to come out on Saturday, we will post in the Ravelry group and on social media to let you know what's going on. But our plan is for it to come out on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Thank you for understanding. 
Okay, do we have any other announcements, Tammy? I don't think so. All right, well then let's, um, we would like to say a humongous thank you to all of you who support the podcast. No matter how it is, somebody's having a bath. Tail clean time. Mm-hmm. Um, we're grateful for each of you because it does unfortunately cost money to do a podcast. I wish it wasn't that way, but that's just how it is. Um, so there are three main ways you can support the podcast financially. First is Patreon, which is a site where you pledge a certain amount a month to your favorite creatives, um, and you earn rewards based on the level you donate at. Dammy, if, um, somebody would like to know more about that or would like to sign up, where should they go? Patreon.com slash Geeky Girls Knit. What's another way? There's a PayPal button in the sidebar of our website if you would like to make a one-time donation. And we are Amazon.com, .co.uk, and .ca affiliates. If you go to our website and look either in the sidebar or at the bottom of the show notes, uh, there are links, both images and actual links, to uh, those Amazon sites. Uh, choose the one that is appropriate for where you live. Do your shopping as usual. We'll earn a little money back based on what you purchase. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And it's a great way to support the podcast by doing something you would be doing anyway. Um, Dammy, why don't you tell us, tell them, because I already know, tell them where to find us online. You can find us at geekygirlsknit.com. There are other links to ever else we are online. You look at your your foot. YouTube, iTunes, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. We have a very silly She's cat. Just... <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, we're going to tell you goodbye. Thanks for sticking with us. I'm, I don't know how long this episode is going to be because, like I said, we record in segments. And so we have to upload all this and see how long it's going to be. Um, I totally lost my train of thought. Well, we hope that you have a re- lovely weekend uh, and a really great week next week um it seems like uh the cold is starting to come in a lot of places um so make sure and stay warm stay hydrated stay and stay crafting keep crafting not stay crafting keep crafting because it's amazing and uh we will talk to you again next week bye bye